Welcome to Indoor Hydroponics. Hi, I'm John, your Indoor Hydroponic Test Dummy. Welcome inside my grow room. Today is November 6, 2014. I believe it's a Thursday. And today I want to talk about three things that I got going on in the grow room. Uh, the first thing is obviously these three little pepper plants that I got going on here. I'm growing uh, four plants but only three varieties and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I also want to talk about how I'm going to grow these, the growing uh, media that I'm going to be using, the method I'm going to be using, and most importantly, the single most, uh, the biggest question that I have uh, when I do these hydroponic videos is, is, what kind of light are you using? What kind of light are you using? And it, your electric bill must be outrageous. So we're going to talk about lights and how much it costs to operate this room, okay? Especially from the lighting perspective, because that's the major expense, okay? Um, and now that I'm building somewhat of a, it's a small audience, thanks to everyone that subscribed, but that is my single most biggest question, is, is your electric bill must be outrageous. Well, okay, I'll, I'll show you that. But first, let's take a look at these. Okay, peppers. guys, here are the three uh, varieties of pepper that I'm going to be growing indoors this year, okay? And why did I choose these particular varieties? Well, it's simple. These two right here, uh, we're in the seed bin at the end of the year at the nursery that I shop at and listen to me man w At the end of the year when those nurseries start putting on uh, those those seed packets in the bin And then they mark them down to like a quarter a piece That is the time to buy some seed and I tell you what I got this packet for a quarter and that packet for a quarter And that is why I'm growing them that no other reason than that this one, on the other hand, was bought at Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. And this was a variety uh, that I grew in my Landscaping with Bell Peppers video uh, this year. And it's a fantastic sweet bell pepper. Fantastic. Big, blocky, four-walled peppers uh, and, and pretty good production out of them. And I really enjoyed them. I had some leftover seeds, so I'm going to grow some inside. So let's start off with that one. It is a Quadrato Diasti Gialo. Quadrato Diasti Gialo. Very fun to say. And in addition, it's an Italian sweet pepper, okay? And it's got an 80 day maturity on it. So, uh, heirloom seed, fantastic uh, seed. If, uh, if I can get some of these going to maturity this year, maybe I'll save some seed and plant it out in the spring. Second on the list is the Chinese giant sweet Asian bell pepper. Okay, starts off green, kicks into red at maturity. Uh, don't know if it's um, heirloom or not, to be honest with you. Probably, it probably is. From Livingston Seed. Found it out of the seed bin, thought I'd give it a shot. Uh, everything that I've researched online says it's a big giant pepper, so we will see the results in a couple months. Thirdly, and lastly, is the Burpee Sweet Pepper Cardinal Hybrid. Now, Burpee makes the Franken hybrids, right? And, then, and that's not to be confused with GMO-produced seeds, okay? This is just a hybrid. Burpee uh, hybridizes their seeds, and, and they, they name them, they brand them. They, I don't know if they patent them, but whatever. So this is a Cardinal Hybrid. It starts off green, kicks into purple, then kicks into red when it's finally uh, mature. And let's not confuse maturity dates, okay? 75 days is from transplant of this point. So the clock actually starts at this point, okay? It's not from the point you put the seed in the soil. So 75 days from today is when they will hit their maturity. So the next question may be, how are we going to grow them? Good question. Aero pots, smart pots, fabric pots, whatever you want to call them, that's what I'm going to be growing vegetables inside this year with. I think these make for a fantastic indoor grow method in that um, these, these pots are breathable, which means they air prune the roots. What does that mean? Well, when the roots go out, uh, they sense oxygen because these bags are breathable, right? And what they do is, is they splinter off and then go back in. So it prevents the plant from getting root bound. It also gives off a finer root mass, a finer spread. So it has a better way of taking up nutrients and water. I like this. I like this a lot. In fact, I'm going to go with this this year as a way to conserve energy. Okay. Because obviously when we get to the cost of the lights and the energy consumption, you'll see it does get a little bit pricey. Um, so I'm not going to run deep water cultures with 
pumps anymore. I'm not going to have to do multiple water changes every week or every other week. Everything that I'm going to grow this year is going to be in a fabric pot. They're five gallon pots. I'm going to do my peppers and tomatoes in them. However, I will be doing more of a hydroponic type of a application for cucumbers. Now, let's talk about this. You may be saying to yourself, John, you're growing in a potting medium that is not hydroponics. Well, let's take a look at the definition of hydroponics. Smartphone, Google, hydroponics, multiple definitions. Okay, so I'll just read the first two definitions. So hydroponics, the cultivation of plants in a nutrient-rich solution rather than soil and under controlled conditions of light, temperature, and humidity. Second definition. The science of growing plants in a specially prepared solution instead of soil. Okay, so at first glance, of course, this looks like soil, and it is soil. It's a peat-based soil with lots and lots of amendments. And I'm going to talk about the type of soil that I'm using in future videos because I believe it's the best potting soil known to man. Um, however, when we get into the hydroponics, it's up to me to feed these plants, okay? I have to read them, I have to look at them, I have to judge when and where and how much nutrient to provide them. Alright, I'm, go I'm going to be feeding these a hydroponic nutrient that is specially made for these growing conditions, okay? So it's up to me to feed them. Nature's not going to feed them in this, in this situation. Secondly, it's the heat, the temperature, the humidity. That's all on me too, okay? So if you ask me, am I growing hydroponically in this method, I'm going to tell you absolutely yes, because I'm providing all of the support for these plants to produce, okay? Light, temperature, humidity, nutrient. It's all on me. This is just a substrate for the plant to grow in and for the roots to take hold. So. Yes, it's different than an NFT or a Dutch bucket system or um, a deep water culture or even cracky method. But in my mind, this is still hydroponics and I'm going to be saving money and saving the environment maybe a little bit by not using the pumps to grow in deep water culture this year. Now let's talk lights. All right, guys, on to the single most frequently asked question of my small viewership is uh, whether it be in Google Plus or personal comment or in the comment section of my videos is, is what do you grow under, how much does it cost, are you growing broke type of thing. All right, so the first thing that I had to consider when I was setting this up was is I'm growing in a cold Michigan basement, okay? So I need heat down here. And CFLs and LEDs are not going to put off the heat that I need down here. So I went with high intensity bulbs, okay? So I've got two setups. One's a 400 watt metal halide and the other is a 500 watt metal halide, okay? Now, I do this as cost effective and efficiently as possible, okay? So by that I mean during the vegetative state when the plants are small and not taking up a lot of room, I run a 400 watt bulb. I do not run the second bulb. I just run one bulb for 18 hours a day uh, until these things get established, they start to grow out, and at that point, I spread them out, kick the second bulb on, but I reduce the duration during the blooming phase, okay, to 12 hours on and 12 hours off, and I finish out the grow that way. So that way, I'm saving a little bit of energy, I'm being a little bit earth-friendly here, so as, as best as I can, all right? Now, what does it cost? Well, when you look on your electric bill, everything is billed by kilowatt hour, right? So I have to convert this stuff to kilowatts and to determine a cost. So I'll put the little calculation right here of what it all costs. But regardless, with one lamp on during the vegetative state, 18 hours a day, it calculates to about a dollar and eight cents per day to run this light, all right? Which is thirty-two dollars and fourteen cents, and that's based off of a fifteen cent charged kilowatt hour that I receive from my electric company, all right? Some places it's cheaper, some places it's more expensive, but in these parts it's 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So, about $32 a month to run during veg. When I kick over to bloom and I run both bulbs, that's the, a total of 900 watt energy consumption, but I reduce the duration down to 12 hours, that is about a dollar 62 per day I times that by 30, a normal billing cycle, that gets me around $48.60 a month. If I put a fan in here, um, we can call it probably an even 50, 51, 52, somewhere around there. So uh, around $50 is what it takes to, to use this room. So 
Now that may be expensive to some. I'm blessed in that I can afford that. Uh, so I do it, and that's my hobby, all right? During the winter, I don't do any type of other things. I do grow outside during the summer, and I shut the room down, obviously. So that is my way of kind of being a little bit of earth friendly, I guess. So that is what this costs. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, Going to be coming back with a whole bunch more videos here coming up as the plants grow out. All right. So take care. Like, subscribe, give me a thumbsies thing, whatever. Talk to you guys later. Bye.